friends good morning welcome to this episode of daybreak god's mercies are new every morning so let's praise god through this song You're my master and my king, Jesus. You're my Lord, my everything, Jesus. It's your blood that made me clean, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. You're my master and my king, Jesus. You're my Lord, my everything, Jesus. It's your blood that made me clean. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. You're my master and my king, Jesus. You're my Lord, my everything, Jesus. It's your blood that made me clean. shame of your love not a shame of your grace not a shame of your cross not a shame of your word from the highest mountain top to the lowest valley low shout your name until the whole earth knows Jesus you're my master and my king Jesus you're my Lord my It's your blood that made me clean Hallelujah, hallelujah What can I do, what can I do but dance and shout I have to let these praises out I once was lost and oh so bound By your grace I have been found And if the world can scream and shout For earthly temporary things I can give my loudest praise to Thee, Jesus. You're my master and my king, Jesus. You're my Lord, my everything, Jesus. It's Your blood that made me clean. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sing with us. Hallelujah. Cry out your praise. Hallelujah. All your strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. You're my master and my king. Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything, Jesus, it's your blood that made me clean, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus, you're my master and my king, Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything, Jesus. It's your blood that made me clean. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can I do? What can I do but dance and shout? I have to let these praises out. I once was lost and oh so bound. By your grace I have been found. And if the world can scream and shout for earthly temporary things, I can give my loudest praise to thee. Jesus, you're my master and my king, Jesus, you're my Lord, my everything, Jesus, it's your blood that made me clean, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. 
that indeed was a spiritually uplifting song. Certain messages and stories have a lot to teach us. So let's hear to one such message. Two brothers in a certain village were convicted for having stolen sheep. As per the brutal punishment that existed in the village, both these brothers were branded on their foreheads with the letters ST, which stood for Sheep Thief. One of these brothers, unable to bear the stigma that was attached to this branding, ran away to a foreign place. Many people there would question and ask him what these letters ST meant. And finally, unable to bear the humiliation, that brother would go on to end his life. But the second brother remained in his village and told himself, well, there is nothing much I can do about this branding. The only thing I can try to do is try to lead a good life and probably that will help me to gain the respect from my village people. And so saying, he remained back trying to do as much good as he could do for the people in the village. The story goes on to say that a few years later, a certain stranger would come to that village and would find this brother engaging himself in a lot of good works. The stranger would ask a native of that village what that ST meant. The native really did not know what it was standing for but he would go on to say, this man leads such a beautiful life that I feel this ST stands as an abbreviation for being a saint. This brother who had the letters ST, which actually signified sheep thief, was by his life of repentance able to make the people to say that he was now no longer a sheep thief, ST, but rather a saint, ST. That is the transformation that is brought about when we make a sincere repentance and allow God's grace and mercy to work in our life. The letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 2, verse 2, St. Paul declares, Yet I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. St. Paul was a person who, because of his false convictions, became a persecutor of the church. He was hated by many people in his time. But the moment he had the experience, the transforming touch of the Lord, St. Paul would have his life transformed in repentance and cooperating with the grace of God he would be able to say with conviction, I now no longer live, Christ lives in me. Each of us in our life may have moments and occasions when we feel sometimes miserable, maybe because of sin, maybe because of the mistakes that we have done, maybe because of the failures that we have encountered. And that may sometimes make us to run away from the society, run away from the kingdom of God. But the Lord assures us, if you and I are willing to come to Him in repentance, then His power of grace and mercy can transform us and can help all of us to live a saintly life. Saint Paul, the former Saul, was able to make transformative changes in his life by cooperating with the grace of God. And he was today called as St. Paul, one of the greatest missionaries the church has ever seen. Each of us are also called forth to live this life of transformation. Are we ready to cooperate with the grace and mercy of God? Let this day be a day when we say a yes to God's power in our life and thus 
seek to live always a holy and a saintly life. May the name of the Lord be ever praised. Live Jesus. I'm sure this message was an enriching one. All saints were just people like us, but the only difference was they had trust in God. So, let us hear to one such story of a saint. Let's listen to the promise words of today. First, let me read the passage and then reflect on it. He went away from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get all this? 
What is the wisdom given to him? What mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James and Joseph, and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands upon a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, today we are presented with a scene where Jesus failed. He said he could not perform any miracle because of their unbelief. And this happened in Jesus' own hometown, Nazareth. Of course, he was born in Bethlehem, but he was brought up in Nazareth. And the people knew him exactly as the son of Joseph the carpenter and Mary, and himself as a carpenter. They knew him well. Jesus did not have any particular training as their rabbis. He did not belong to any particular rabbinic school. In fact, he did not go to any school at all. He is considered to be an illiterate person. And then now he comes after a break from the village. He had gone to Judea where he was baptized by John and then he was going around preaching and now he comes to his hometown. And people were amazed. He came to the synagogue and they were amazed at his teaching. The story is presented by all the three synoptics. Mark and Matthew bring it somehow in the middle of the Galilean ministry. And the Gospel of Luke is presented as a manifesto of Jesus at the very beginning. The Nazareth episode as a symptom, as a program of Jesus' ministry. But what is striking is the people did not accept him. Accept, did not accept him because they thought that he, they knew him. They were amazed at that way he was teaching. What is the teaching? What is the powers that are being manifested? We know him. This is Jesus, the carpenter, the son of Joseph and Mary. And his brothers and sisters are here among us. And this particular passage also causes another difficulty. Did Mary have other children other than Jesus? It would seem that he had four sons and at least two daughters, his sisters, so that is a question that we'll have to discuss in another place. But however, it doesn't mean that the brothers doesn't mean immediately the sons of the same mother and father. They can mean also cousins. What is being said is he is so familiar. We know them. We know him. So they have already measured this particular Jesus, the carpenter. And that was the whole danger. They could not realize that this carpenter was the son of God. They could not accept and this is what we call the familiarity breeds content. They have already measured this. This is a carpenter. He has only this much. And how can he pretend to be doing this? And they could not believe. And since they did not believe, Jesus could not perform any miracle there. And it's a kind of addition. It is that appendix except by laying his hands and healing a few. So it was a kind of rejection in his hometown. Jesus came to his own and his own could not or did not receive him. And I think this is presented for us as a lesson. We can also become so familiar with the sacraments, with the scripture, with our faith, and we know everything. And we realize not that we are creatures that God, we are, God is much beyond our knowledge and our comprehension. We become so familiar with the sacraments that we lose its sense. We forget the greatness, the marvel of the Eucharist. And a piece of bread cannot be even called a piece of bread. It's a piece of paper so thin. The master of the universe is here. This is me, take and eat. We eat and drink and don't think about what we are doing. So it can become familiar. It can become so with all the sacraments, with our liturgical prayers and our Eucharistic celebrations and confessions, everything can become a routine and lose sense and doesn't change our lives. 
So we have to be aware. You should remember what happened to the Nazarenes. Jesus passed through their midst and he did not go back there. And so the familiarity can somehow destroy our very lives, the sense. Everything becomes a routine, doesn't make any sense. And I think that's what is happening in many Christian countries and Christian centers. The people who hear for the first time about Jesus, his miracles, his life, and they believe and really see miracles, change of life, change of attitudes. So this is a warning. What happened to Nazareth can also happen to us, unless we are careful, unless we open our eyes, open our hearts to Jesus who comes every day to re receive anew the word of God day after day we might fall into this routine. Let us ask the Lord for the grace not to forget that he is coming every day and every day should be new. Heavenly Father, help us to believe. Help us to believe your word. Believe your son who has come to this world and is coming every day to us through the word, through the Eucharist and through the sacraments. Lord, we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, under the Son, under the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we are reaching to the end of this episode, let us thank God for filling us with His Word and praise Him through this song.
wish you all a day full of joy, peace and divine blessings.